when you're changing something in your process, but your product should still remain the same because you're not making a new product, a triangle test is a wonderful way to make sure that consumers will consider it the same product. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video is about a triangle test, which is used a lot in sensory analysis, but the main purpose it has is to make sure that your product does not differ from what you've been making before. And you usually do this either when comparing, for instance, two factories making the same product, or when you've changed something in your process that should not affect the product characteristics. So your consumer should not notice a difference, but you know that you've been changing something in your recipe or in the settings of your machine. Now, what you do is you take a big group of people, you all give them this triangle test of three things to taste, and they should pick out that sample that differs from the other two. So let's take a look at how to organize this in practice. So you've got two big samples, right? So you have your normal production and you have your new recipe or your new production parameters. What you do, unbeknownst of course to your test subjects, is you put two of product A and one of product B on their plate. You label them something neutral like six, nine and eight. So they don't know which one comes from which batch. Also, just twist the plate around a bit. They should really not know which one is in the middle or first or last. Make it as symmetrical as you can. And they have to decide which of these is different from the other two. And that's also what you can tell them. We've got two samples that come from the same batch and one sample that comes from a different batch. Which one is different? And they have to choose. They cannot say they're all the same. No, there is a difference. You should see, taste the difference. So please pick the one that is actually standing out. If there is no difference, what we expect, of course, is that people will just pick any of them. So we have a 30% chance, or actually 33% chance, of picking sample B, and a 67% chance of picking one of the two uh, sample A's. Now, the triangle test checks how far are we above this 30%. So if we are much higher than this 33%, then apparently there is a difference. Now the usual way to test for this is a chi squared test. Now, if you run the numbers and you take a pretty standard p-value of 5%, 0.05, you will notice that at 46% of the samples, it says there is a difference. So when you have something like 35, 40, 45% of your answers are B, you can say, well, that is, a, that is higher than 33%, but the statistics behind this test still say, uh, probably don't draw the conclusion that they are different. So that means when you are under, well, way under half of the correspondence picking the correct new sample, you say they are the same. And as soon as you are roughly at half, so more than, more than 45, definitely, but more than 46%, then you say this sample is different, which usually, in case when you are doing a triangle test like this, means that something went wrong. Now, of course, you can do a test like this to confirm that there is a difference. For instance, you're making diet soda and you really want consumers to taste that there is something different about this soda. But in all honesty, when you're doing a test specifically for a known product characteristic and you want to make sure that it's in your product, there are better tests, also better sensory tests to really test for a specific difference, for a specific taste or characteristic of your product. You do a triangle test when you're actually hoping that there is no difference. So usually this would be a bad result. This would be a very nice result. Now, the practical way to set this up is get a lot of people and they do not have to be trained. As long as they sort of know your product, they, they can taste it or, uh, or feel it. So that depends a bit on your product. It's often used with food products. You just give a plate of free samples to as many people as you can at least over 50 or so, and you ask them which of the three is different 
No further explanation. You don't have to tell what is new in the batches. In fact, do not give them any additional information. Just let them use their own senses to taste the difference. And also very important, they should not form a committee. They should not discuss the differences before they give an answer. So if you have a number of people in the office, this is a wonderful, it's an easy way to do this type of testing. You can quickly get a lot of people, but make sure that they first give the answers. And if they can hear each other, just let them write down their answers and only afterwards they can discuss things. Of course, your colleagues want to know what you've been doing in the process, that they're interested, but only after they gave the answer. So there you have it, triangle testing, a very quick but powerful way to determine if your product is still the same after some changes in your process. Very important if you want to validate changes that you made in the operation and you of course want to share with product owners, with sales department, with managers, that this did not affect the taste characteristics of your product. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you would like me to explain some of these other sensory or statistical analysis tools, drop me a comment, let me know which one you are struggling with and I'll be happy to explain them. But for now, I wish you the best of luck with your product development and also, of course, enjoy your continuous improvement journey.